So people are pretty critical about how I film and photograph weddings. And since we do both photo and video, I like to be very, very well prepared before going into a wedding. So what I do is I use this app called Good Notes on the iPad Pro. I'm sure it's on iPad to detail how the day is going to go. And I can share that with my photographers and videographers if I have a few different people on my team. So this past wedding we did, I had one uh, second photographer and I had two cinematographers and then I had an assistant shooting BTS, but also getting the drone shots on the wedding day. So this is how I, I prepared them and myself for the wedding day. So we were on point. There weren't any kind of, oh, what are we doing at this time? What are we shooting here? How are we getting it? I created this guide for them. So here it is. And what I did was I basically started at the time that we're getting ready and kind of went through it. So as you can see, it has 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. right now. Um, groom pics, bridal uh, uh, pictures, um, the, the table that's going to have all the details. Um, and then I have who is kind of there, who's in charge of that. So we're also on point for that. I know what shots I'm going to get. I know, you know, I'm with the bride. My second photographer is with the groom. I know that I'm getting the dress, the jewelry like that. I'm getting her with her mom. And I obviously can trust my second photographer to get the groom and the groom if he's with his brothers, his dad, which they were there. This is just a little bit more detailed. So then I have what we're doing afterwards. So when we're doing the um, bride and the bridesmaids, I have exactly where we are. I have, we're interviewing the maid of honor. Um, I have the dad giving the gift to the bride. And then I try to find inspiration online from other amazing photographers like uh, Lynn and Jersey, you'll see. And I add, add them here. So that I kind of have an idea on what we're going for. And then maybe the second shooter cinematographers also have an idea what we're going for. So I have here who's reading the vows, the solo shots that we need to get. And then this was a Persian wedding. So I was going to assume that maybe my second shooters aren't super well prepared to um, shoot a Persian wedding. Maybe they don't have the experience. So here's a sample of a sofre, which is at Persian weddings, which is uh, my picture. And then I had what shots we need. So for video, for example, we wanted panning, we wanted walking in up, down, all that stuff for photos. Since I was probably going to be with the bride uh, when she's getting ready, I may not have time to get the sofa shots, even though I did. So I have shots for my second photographer on how she's going to get that. So she's going to get each piece of the sofa, the arch, the flowers, the seating, if it has special things on the seating, all that good stuff. Then it's the kind of the hard part. And the reason it's hard is because there's so many of us and we want to be in the perfect spot so we're not in each other's shots. Thankfully, when it's me and my team capturing a wedding, I can lead the way I want. I can position people the, the way I want. And we're not getting in arguments or we're not in each other's shots because we're competing with each other. This is another reason why you should hire the same company to do photo and video. So here we have the ceremony. We have the sofre. Um, and then we have the actual chart that was sent to us by the planner on how the uh, seating's uh, going to be and where the sofre is going to be, all that good stuff. And then I kind of have where I want people to be. Now I switched this up last minute, but it's a good spot to basically start. It's a good starting point. And then we have where we're going to be where the ceremony ends. And the reason I have this in there is because this was one of the favorite shots that the bride wanted. She wanted the dip at the top of the aisle with the petals. So I kind of have that drawn and I have all four of us next to each other at the top of the, the aisle. So there's no confusion whatsoever. We're all on the same page. When the officiant tells the bride and groom they can go for the kiss uh, at the bottom of the aisle, we kind of come to the top. We're prepared for them to walk down. Piece of cake. We got the shot. Um, I'll throw it up on the screen so you can see how that looks. Next, we're going to the beach. So two of us, myself and my lead cinematographer, we're going to the beach. And the second shooters are starting at cocktail hour and then meeting us there. So I kind of have some shots I wanted to get um, in case I forgot or in case something happens and I'm not there and the second photographer is doing it. So I came up with a plan for that. And then I have what time we're going to be at the ballroom because we only had five minutes where there was not any, any staff or any people inside the ballroom before the uh, grand opening where I can get the bride and groom in there to get some shots of them. Um, and then I use Lynn and Jersa's inspiration because that's what I always try to go for. I know the shots in my brain that I'm getting, but I want to share this again with the photographer, cinematographer, so they have an idea. 
I have the lighting I want because we had uh, three different types of uh, photo lighting there and we had two continuous lighting there. So I specifically have which one I want so my assistant knows which one I wanna get, which, which light we're using for video, all that good stuff is there. It's I try to make it detailed. I know maybe I'm going overboard, but at the time they were supposed to be there, the lighting and the inspo that we're using. Next, we have the grand entrance. And I, I wanted to set it up in a way where we know we're gonna be in a C, a little half semicircle, so we're not going in each other's shots. Um, I did not know which door we're coming in from, but we actually, the, the bride and groom came in from the, the bottom right door so that we were, um, on the opposite end of the dance floor and we were moving. So we were moving to our right going across. And, you know, we changed that at the last minute, but it was again, a good starting point for me to share this with the bride and groom, not with the bride and groom, with my, with my crew when we got there, when we all met up at like 1 p.m. that day. And then I always have questions for my crew to make sure I don't forget if they have any food restrictions. So someone was vegan, some, uh, I have another guy, Mario, he hates fish. So if they serve a uh, salmon, I make sure they bring in an al alternative for him. If anyone has any health issues, if someone, you know, was like, Hey, I'm, I'm feeling feverish and coughing, you know, I'd say you got to go home, buddy. Sorry. Um, so, and I also ask them if they have any shots they want for their portfolio. And all of them were like, Hey, we're here for you today. So you tell us what you need from us, which I appreciate that. But I also wanted to get some crazy epic shots for them so that they can use it for their portfolio. And when, when you let your photographer, cinematographer use shots for their portfolio, they're more excited. They're more into being creative and getting those amazing shots. Because if you shut them down from the beginning and you're like, hey, uh, you're never gonna be able to post these, they're not gonna do their best, I promise you. Even professionals, they're not gonna do their best. It's psychological, it's emotional, whatever you wanna call it, they're not gonna do their best. So give them, tell them ahead of time that they're gonna be able to use this for their portfolio. Maybe not right away, maybe it's, 30 days, 60 days down the line. And obviously they can't tag the bride, groom, vendors venue, but they do have the opportunity to use it. So that's that's how I go about this. I try to create these anytime there's more than two of us for a wedding. If there's just two of us, meaning myself and a sister or myself and a cinematographer, this isn't really needed. But it does help you have an idea on how the day's gonna go. And it's more detailed than a timeline because the timeline obviously just has the times in a short description. This I try to add the photos, even if my drawings are horrible, terrible, some of the worst you've probably ever seen on YouTube, I still try to add that in there. So this is how I do it. Thanks for watching. This was Professor Wedding.